from interpretations to the holy name of the Lord. Seven, to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name. Eight, to consider the chanting of Hare Krishna as one of the auspicious ritualistic activities which are offered in the Vedas as fruitive activities, Karma Kanda. Nine, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of the holy name. Ten, to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name and to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. It is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava must guard against these offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success, Krishna Prema. So once again, I thank everyone for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. So may I know who all are joining the call today? Hare Krishna Mataji, Nangot Manam, Shila Prabhupada Gide, Guru Maharaj Gide, this is Guru Dakta from Chicago, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. Our grace to Srila Prabhupada, Sri Guru, and Sri Garanga, and to all the assembled devotees. This is Megha from Naperville. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Megha Mataji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Mataji, for joining Bhakti Sangha Conference Call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhagavati Vasudha Mataji, the Navat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Vinita Gandhar with Devidasi from Texas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Vinita Gandhar Vika Mataji, the Navat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Mataji, for joining Bhakti Sangha Conference Call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhagavati Vasudha Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaji. My humble obeisances to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumari Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Krishna Kumari Mataji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you Mataji for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhagavati Vasudha Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, please accept my humble obediences. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Sri Guru and Gauranga and all assembled devotees. Yashamati from Chicago. Hare Krishna Yashamati Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you Mataji for joining Bhakti Sangha Bhakti Sangha. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhagavati Vasudha Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the assembled devotees. This is Indulekha Karuna Devi Dasi from Lincoln. Hare Krishna Indulekha Karuna Mataji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you Mataji for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Bhagavati Vasudha Mataji. This is Gauri from India. Thank you, Mataji. All glories to assembled devotees. Hare Krishna Gauri Mataji, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Vijay. Thank you, Mataji, for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This is Bali Vrinda. Hare Krishna Balavrinda, Dandavas Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you, Balavrinda, for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, is there anyone who would like to introduce in the call today? Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all assembled devotees, Dhanvat Pranam to all. This is Pooja Aroda from Haridwar, Hare Krishna Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam. Hare Krishna Pooja Mataji, Dhanvat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you Mataji for joining Bhakti Sangha conference call, Hare Krishna. Okay, I welcome all of you once again. Thank you everyone for joining today's Srimad Bhagavatam class. Today we are really fortunate to have His Grace Radhika Valla Prabhuji to enlighten us on the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, you are there on the call.
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी या प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी प्लीज एक्सेप्ट ऑल ऑफ हमल ओबेसेंसेस थैंक यू प्रभु जी फॉर गिविंग योर वैल्यूबल टाइम एंड एसोसिएशन इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल वी आर रियली फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव यू ऑन दिस कॉल प्रभु जी वी आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर योर एनलाइटनिंग क्लास हरे कृष्ण आई हैंड ओवर द कॉल टू यू प्रभु जी प्लीज टेक ओवर नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यासम तथो जलमुदीर ये नष्टेश्वद्रेशु निगवत भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टि कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय चंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम ओम ज्ञानतिरंद ज्ञानाजन शलाका चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते सारस्वती दें गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गादादादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so we are reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 5 chapter 25 verse number 6 the glories of lord ananta sa eva bhagavan ananto ananta gunarnav adi deva upasamhrita amarsha rosha vego lokanam swastaya aste what were translation saha that he was certainly bhagavan the supreme personality of god ananta ananta deva ananta gunarnava the reservoir of unlimited transcendental qualities adi deva the original lord are not different from the original supreme personality of god upasamhrita who was restrained amarsha of his intolerance rosh and rath vega the force lokanam of all people and all planets swastaye for the welfare aste remains translation and purport by his divine grace yes bhakti vedant swami shri prabhupa lord sankarshan is the ocean of unlimited spiritual qualities and thus he is known as ananta deva he is non different from the supreme personality of god for the welfare of all living entities in this material world he resides in his abode restraining his anger and intolerance ananta dev prabhu purport ananta deva's main mission is to dissolve this material creation but he checks his anger and intolerance the material world is created to give the conditioned souls another chance to go back home back to god but most of them do not take advantage of this facility 
after the creation they again exercise their old propensity for lording it over the material world these activities are the conditioned souls anger ananta deva and he desires to destroy the entire material world yet because he is the supreme personality of godhead he is kind towards us and checks us anger and intolerance only at a certain times does he express his anger and destroy the material world hare krishna so very beautiful verse from the shrimad bhagavatam <clears throat> about the character of lord ananta स एव भगवान्णव अनंतुणारणव अर्णव मीन दोशन अनंतुणारणव इज दोशन आफ अटेड स्पिरीचुअल क्वालिटी सो वी सी वी टॉक अबउट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड So there are various verses in the Bhagavatam which talk about the unlimited nature of the Lord's qualities, and uh, even not only in relation to the Supreme Lord, uh, not only the Supreme Lord's qualities, even anything in relation to the Supreme Lord uh, is talked in terms of the same unlimited nature. Lord Brahma explains in the Shrimad Bhagavatam when he talks about uh, uh, Krishna's unlimited qualities. He says, "Gunat manas tepi gunan vimatum, hita vatirnasya ka ishi resya, kalle na yairva vimita su kalpai, bu pamshavakke mihika jubasa." in due course of time learned philosophers the scientists they might be able to count the number of atoms on the earth or they might be able to count the number of snow particles or perhaps even the shining molecules radiating from the sun but among these learned people even if a person manages to count number of uh, atoms on the earth the snow particles on the shining molecules radiating from the sun but who could possibly count the unlimited transcendental qualities possessed by the supreme lord who descended to the surface of the earth for the benefit of all living entities so brahma is talking about the unlimited nature of krishna's qualities sanatan goswami says that why krishna displays unlimited qualities is that there are unlimited number of living entities each and every living entity is unique and krishna wants to attract every living entity in a personal way so therefore he displays a quality which that particular living entity can relate so therefore uh, because the living entities are unlimited therefore he displays unlimited qualities so such verses come not only in relation to like uh, such verses talk about the unlimited nature of krishna's qualities vedanta desika in his paduka sahasram vedanta desika wrote 1000 shlokas in glorification of the lord's paduka we see in the rama avatar bharat was the person who worshiped lord ram's paduka when lord ram was in exile bharat actually worshiped lord's paduka and in krishna avatar 
Uddhava was the person who worshipped Krishna's Paduka. The 11th canto, 29th chapter, is described that in Uddhava, in separation from Krishna, when Uddhava came to meet Krishna, after understanding Krishna's plan that is going back to the spiritual world, it is described that Uddhava took the Paduka of Krishna and then he took that Paduka to Badrika Ashram. He worshipped that Paduka. So Uddhava was the person who worshipped Krishna's Paduka and Bharat was the person who worshipped Ram's Paduka. Vedanta Desika describes the uh, glories of the Lord's Paduka. Nishesha Mambaratalam Yadi Patrika Syat Saptar Navi Yadi Sametya Mashi Bhavitri Vakta Sahasra Vadana Purusha Swayam Chet Liketa Ranga Pati Paduka Yo Prabhavaha. So he says that. What a great and impossible thing it would be if a person were to present the greatness of the Paduka of the Lord, Paduka of Lord Ranganath. He says that, suppose if a person takes the whole sky as a paper, Nishesha Ambaratalam Yadi Patrikasya. And if a person uh, takes the, the, the water contained in the seven oceans as the ink and Vakta Sahasra Vadana and the thousand mouthed Lord Ananta, if that Lord Ananta were to become the speaker of the Lord, uh, the, the Ananta were to become the speaker of the glories of the Paduka of the Lord. Even then, uh, it is said that the entire paper uh, in the form of the sky, that would get exhausted. And the entire quantity of the ink from the seven ocean, that would get exhausted. Even Lord Ananta, with his thousand mouths, uh, even uh, he may continue to speak for unlimited time, but even then, the only yes, only a small portion of the glories of the Lord's Paduka will be written. So even if the vast expanse of the sky were to be made into a writing paper, even if the content of the deep sea were to be used as a writing ink. And even if the thousand-headed Ananta were to be assigned the task of writing about the immeasurable, auspicious qualities of Lord Spaduka, and even if the Lord himself becomes a writer, but even then, it would be an impossible task to record fully the glories of the Lord's Paduka. So this is another verse, like there are such verses which talk about the unlimited nature of the Lord's, the qualities of the Lord or the Lord's Paduka. Another verse in the Vedanta Desika, in the Paduka Sahasram, Vedanta Desika says that, Ambun Yambu Nidher Ananya Gatibir Meenai kiyat gamyate, kleshe napi kiyat vyalingya rabaso tungai lavangeshwarai, vigyata kiyati punakshiti bruta, mantena gambirata, kimtai keshava paduka guna, maham bode statasta vayam. So he says, uh, yeah, fish. Uh, is, uh, he, in this verse, he is again talking about the unlimited nature of the Lord's, uh, the glories of the Lord's Paduka by comparing with the 
depth of the salty ocean and the depth of the milk ocean so you see the fishes in the ocean they travel only in the water meenai gatibir meenai kiyat gamyate the fishes the fishes have taken shelter of the water and they travel only within the water but even then the fish the fishes travel only for a limited distance the salty ocean they cannot measure the complete depth of the ocean although they live in the ocean although the fishes go about freely horizontally and vertically uh, but the fishes actually they go only for a limited distance within the ocean they cannot measure the complete depth of the ocean the second analogy he gives us kleshe naapi kiyad yalingya rabaso tungai plavangeshwarai so plavanga plavanga refers to the monkeys plavangeshwarai the monkey chiefs and rabaso tungai the monkeys are known for jumping with great speed rabaso tungai but uh, even the monkeys who can actually jump at a great speed uh, even uh, even those monkeys cannot measure the depth of the salt ocean so plavangeshwari especially here can refer to hanuman although hanuman could actually jump across the ocean with a great speed in order to find sita but even that hanuman cannot find the depth of the uh, ocean depth of the salty ocean how far can the monkey chiefs to cross with their exceedingly high speed with full exertion uh, how uh, how how far can they measure the depth of the ocean even they cannot measure the depth of the ocean uh, and then the third analogy he gives the first two are in relation to the depth of the salty ocean and third is in relation to the depth of the milky ocean vigyata kiyati punakshiti bruta mantena gambhirata during the churning of the milk ocean the samudra mantan episode the mandara parvat was used as a churning rod and that mandara parvat uh, it actually uh, it was uh, used as a churning rod for actually churning the milk ocean the mandara parvat was immersed within the ocean but although the mandara parvat mandara parvat is a huge mountain although it was immersed within the ocean but even that mandara parvat failed to measure the depth of the milky ocean the milk ocean so uh, you see but uh, and then the vedanta desika says about himself kim taihi keshava paduka guna maham bodhe tatastha vayam as far as i am concerned so he says that the fishes are unable to measure the depth of the salty ocean even the best of the monkeys are unable to measure the depth of the salty ocean and the mandara mountain is unable to measure the depth of the milk ocean and as far as i am concerned i am an insignificant person i am standing on the one side of the shore of the ocean of the ocean of the glories of lord spaduka i am just standing on the shore of this ocean of the glories of the lord spaduka huh. and uh, like how can i actually measure the uh, how can i actually estimate the the extent of the glories of the lord spaduka essentially he says that the this, uh, the point is that 
the glories of the lord's paduka is limitless and incomparable so here uh, the same word is used ananta gunarnava the lord's lord ananta's uh, qualities are like unlimited like a ocean uh, and then here it is explained that lord ananta who is the adi deva uh, the original supreme lord upasamhrita amarsha rosha vego so lord ananta controls his intolerance and anger amarsha is the intolerance rosha is the anger he controls the urges of intolerance and anger uh, for the sake of the welfare of the world lokanam swasthaye aste swasthaye aste because lord ananta's uh, services at the time of annihilation at the time of annihilation uh from the mouth of lord ananta the the, the fire of universal destruction emanates and then he destroys the universe uh, so understanding that uh, the time of maintenance of the universe is going on and this is not the appropriate time to exhibit my anger lord ananta uh, restrains his anger restraints his intolerance so why does he feel anger why is there a feeling of intolerance the reason is that the living entities are given an opportunity uh, to actually engage in the devotional service of the lord perfect is perfect their life and for that sake the universe is created hmm. so the many people the scientists they analyze the nature of the material world but uh, they don't actually although they may try to understand the nature of the world about the laws but one thing they cannot understand how much ever they may try is that the purpose of this material world why the world is created the purpose of the world is known only to the devotees are uh, is only known by the to the scriptures uh, so the purpose of the material world is to give an opportunity for the living entity to enjoy independently from krishna and then uh, and then and also uh, while giving that opportunity the living entities are taught that uh, their attempt to enjoy independently from krishna will be futile uh, so that the li- living entities can ultimately return back to the spiritual world and this purpose is known only to the uh, devotees and but the, when the living entities are given this opportunity but most of the living entities do not take advantage of this opportunity they don't take advantage of this facility actually so i spoke about the unlimited nature of the lord's qualities so most of the living entities they are immersed in actually um, the illusory things of this world like nowadays uh, there are like uh, different pan india movies come up there are movie directors who make a pan india movies uh, these like movies which are made in multiple languages and they are screened even in outside india and many movies they collect like 1000 crores 500 crores 600 crores so th- that means you can imagine like how many people must be watching those movies all over the world they make uh, such movies like but uh, in the movie when we see the different characters the different heroes or the heroines when they display certain qualities and they display certain say beauty in the screen so all those qualities are actually unreal they only act as if they have those qualities in the screen but to see the unreal qualities people invest their real money and the more than that they invest their real time 
in watching that movie and uh, in uh, reading the review of that movie discussing about that movie uh, to to watch something to watch the unreal characters unreal qualities people invest the real time in real money and when it comes to the real qualities of the supreme lord which are eternal uh, and, the, and the conversation between dharma personified and mother earth in the first canto mother earth says that re- the reason i am suffering is that i am actually suffering from separation from krishna who has 38 qualities she lists out 38 qualities and then she says that these qualities are present in krishna eternally and they are not destroyed even at the time of annihilation so for the eternal qualities the which are the qualities of the lord which are eternal and the people call the those qualities as mythology actually that which is actually real uh, those those stories and uh, qualities and past times are called as mythology and those things which are actually unreal people invest the real time huh. people invest the real time so the living entities are given the opportunity to take birth in the material world but most of the people they do not take advantage of the facility they invest the real time real body real senses in the unreal things so after the creation they again exercise their old propensity for lording it over the material world and uh, therefore ananta deva when he sees how the living entities again and again just stubborn to keep trying to enjoy the material world ananta deva becomes angry but because he is a supreme lord is very kind and he thinks that oh, this is not the time to exhibit my anger because this is not the time for annihilation therefore he checks his anger and intolerance only at the times of actually during the pralaya kala he expresses his anger and destroys the material world so we see that uh, there is a uh, there is a proper time to exhibit one's anger or different emotions so the timing is important huh. so many times we uh, we express the emotions at the wrong time one may exhibit compassion at the wrong time or a wrong situation or one may exhibit anger at the wrong time or the wrong situation or towards the wrong people hmm. so it is not, uh, each quality each emotion has its utility but they should be exhibited at the right time the right place towards the right uh, right people hmm. so for example like there is a verse which talks about the kings of the ragu dynasty शैशवे अभ्यस्त विद्याना यवने विषयेषिना वार्दके मुनिवृत्तीना योगे नांते तनुत्यजाम द किंग्स द रघु डायनेस्टी ड्यूरिंग देयर चाइल्डहुड दे ऑब्जर्वड ब्रह्मचर्य व्रत एंड दे दे डिवोटेड देयर टाइम फॉर स्टडी abhyast vidyana they completely dedicated themselves for studying the shastra and during their youth they enjoyed sense gratification by following dharma yavane vishayeshina and during their old age that means uh, during, uh, during the vanaprastha after the retirement they observed muni vritti they observed the conduct of a sage and then during the the last part of their life uh, they yoge nante tanutyaja they practiced the yoga process bhakti yoga and then they gave up their body and practiced their perfected their life so we see that like 
timing is very important not only in exhibiting emotions but even in following our say the different varnashram duties so many times uh, <clears throat> what happens people they don't uh, study during the when it is they are supposed to study they waste their time and then uh, when they become say when they get married as the years progress so and then at that time they they want to study but then the responsibilities have increased in multi directions huh. and then when when it is time to ab, uh, observe the duties of the grahastha ashram procreate children earn money at that time sometimes people become careless and then when they grow old uh, what they have neglected during the grahastha ashram at that time sometimes the later time the, all those desires completely uh, drown your person so so therefore it is important observing the right time is not only important in regards to exhibiting the emotions but even in observing the proper lifestyle of a brahmacharya grahastha vanaprastha sanyas one should exhibit attachment at the right time and detachment also at the right time even the detachment is the ultimate uh, um, goal of the varnashram dharma but when the detachment is exhibited at the wrong time externally then it will create disturbance in the family and in the society so for example like let us see some examples from the bhagavatam how when when somebody exhibited excessive anger either at the wrong time or towards the wrong person how it was actually checked by others when prithu maharaj was performing the ashram 100 ashramayada yagya during the 100th yagya indra was coming and stealing the horse again and again by dress by in the dress of a sanyasi and prithu maharaj became so angry prithu maharaj went to uh, was about to actually kill indra so at that time brahma ji comes there and brahma ji tells that like you have appeared in this world as a portion of the lord in order to establish dharma suitable at this time for the people also so brahma ji is saying that you have appeared at this time you are supposed to establish dharma and uh, but uh, at this time you are actually exhibiting uh, excessive anger and that too towards uh, indra who is an incarnation of the lord yeah although indra is obstructing you in your sacrifice although he is doing a mistake but still uh, this is actually uh, your determination to perform this 100th yagya is making indra come again and again and steal the hearts in the dress of a sanyasi and this is actually uh, encouraging the spread of the adharma many people they are they are also taking the dress of a sanyasi and then they are also performing many uh, wrong activities by wearing the dress of a sanyasi this is actually increasing the dharma dvaji sampradayas dharma dvaji means those who have the flag of dharma and those who mis, uh, like uh, misguide the people by wearing the dress of a dharmic people so therefore you please restrain your anger and uh, give up your effort to perform the 100th sacrifice so here prithu maharaj was reminded by uh, brahma ji to restrain his anger by telling that this is not the, this is a time to establish dharma but you are exhibiting anger towards indra is actually increasing adharma so and another example 
we see in the mahabharata of krishna displaying the anger so anger the nature of anger is that anger makes a person emotionally disturbed and it makes a person intellectually poverty stricken and it makes a person physically act violently and spiritually it makes a person commit offenses so in that sense the overall effect of anger is deadly but at the same time it is not possible to completely give up the anger <clears throat> so we have to we have to make use of the anger as an instrument uh, we cannot completely give up the anger the anger should be uh, redirected towards the right object at the right time in the mahabharata var krishna <coughs> when he saw that uh, arjuna is reluctant to attack bhishma like arjuna is not fighting in, in his full capacity against bhishma krishna became furious and krishna jumped off from the chariot and he took a broken chariot wheel and rushed it towards bhishma to attack bhishma at that time when arjuna saw that krishna is attacking bhishma he became very concerned and he stopped krishna so that krishna does not break his promise of not raising the weapons in the battle arjuna pleaded with krishna to avoid killing bhishma and then krishna went back to his chariot with a smile with a smile within but angry without he was smiling within but he was he was exhibiting his anger without externally so with whom did krishna become angry did krishna become angry with bhishma or towards arjuna so apparently krishna exhibited anger towards bhishma but in reality it was towards arjuna krishna was angry at arjuna because arjuna was reluctant to perform his duty with his full capacity he was not fighting against bhishma with full capacity so here krishna exhibited his anger uh, in order to uh, make arjuna fight to his full capacity against bhishma krishna exhibited his anger in order to make arjuna become angry towards bhishma to his full capacity so here krishna's anger is utility friendly it basically Uh, krishna's anger had the power to shake somebody out of his uh, laziness to perform his duty to the full capacity so therefore anger is like a fire when the fire is uncontrolled it has the power to burn the whole city but if the fire is actually controlled then it has the power to do marvelous things all the fire crackers there is a beautiful display of the fire crackers and there is a with fire we can cook uh, fire only digests everything so, so therefore anger should be utilized as an instrument Hi Krishna. Prabhuji's video froze, so probably we'll wait a little bit.
हरे कृष्ण विनीता माता जी विनीता माता जी आयु दे हरे कृष्ण Yeah, probably she is calling Prabhu Ji, Mother Ji. Yeah, Mother Ji, thank you. Mother Ji, do you want to call call him, Mother Ji? Maybe we should. Does he know? I'm not even sure if Prabhu Ji is okay. here. Okay, okay, Mother Ji, let me call him. Yeah, he's coming back, Mata Ji. He's coming back. Thank you, Mata Ji. So I'm sorry. Actually, suddenly my laptop actually shut down, and then I um, okay, restarted. Took some time to restart. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was uh, explaining about uh, like when Dhruva Maharaj became excessively angry towards uh, the Yakshas. One yaksha actually killed his. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before that, what I was mentioning is that uh, where did I stop? Actually, stop. At the firecrackers. Being good. Firecrackers. Okay. Huh. Okay. Huh. Yeah. In the yaksha prashna, yaksha is asking to Vishnu Maharaj, "Kimnu hitva na shochati." Kimnu hitva na shochati. By renouncing which thing does a person does one never suffer grief? So Yudhishthira Maharaj answers that krodam hitva na shochati. By renouncing anger, one never experiences grief. And uh, Swambhu Manu uh, he advises Drow Maharaj when Drow Maharaj became angry towards the Yakshas. It was right on the part of Drow Maharaj to become angry towards the Yakshas because one Yaksha killed his brother. But when uh, when he got carried away by the anger, when he was killing more and more Yakshas, Swambhu Manu came and told that Samyacha Rosham Badram Te Pratipam Shreyasam Param Shrutena Bhuyasa Rajan Agadena Yatamayam. He said that uh, the anger is the enemy of proper conduct and it is the foremost enemy of spiritual realization. And anger creates fear in other people. A devotee is supposed to be dear for everyone, but anger creates fear in others. And anger is an obstacle for one who is desiring liberation. So therefore, he said that just like a sickness is controlled by the medicine, by constantly hearing good instructions, control your anger, which is a great enemy of proper conduct. And all good fortune unto you. Like that, Swami Bhumana advised uh, Dhruva Maharaj. And when the Naranara and Rishi, when they were performing tapasya, um, the devatas headed by Indra, Indra actually, he wanted to create disturbance in, the, in their tapasya. 
and he sent apsara to distract naranara and rishi but naranara and rishi he produced a much more beautiful apsara from his thighs called as urvashi and in front of urvashi the apsara sent by indra they were like a, uh, uh, they were completely insignificant in front of the beauty of urvashi and then when indra actually indra actually tried to disturb the tapasya of naranara and rishi not knowing the greatness of naranara and rishi but when he realized that naranara and rishi is a incarnation of supreme lord when he understood uh, their greatness and indra came to beg forgiveness but when he came to beg forgiveness he was trembling in fear because normally it is said that uh, when people perform great tapasya they also become easily angry hmm. they also become easily angry because naranara and rishi is an incarnation who appeared in this world in order to instruct the human beings about the importance of tapasya and that is one of the purpose of the naranara and rishi's incarnation about the importance of tapasya uh, uh, so it is said in the niti shataka ऐश्वर्य विभूषण सुजनता शौर्य से वाक् संयमो ज्ञान से उपशम श्रुत से विनयो वित्त पात्रे व्यय अक्रोधस्तपक्षम इट से दट दट जेटल बिहेवियर इज द आर्नमेंट ऑफ प्रॉस्पेरिटी आ जेटल बिहेवियर एनहेंस द ब्यूटी ऑफ प्रॉस्पेरिटी and control of the tongue enhances the uh, beauty of brave people shauryasya vak samyama generally break brave people uh, one of their weakness is that they don't control their tongue but when they control their tongue the control of the tongue will enhance their actually bravery and jnanasya uh, upashamaha knowledge uh, for the knowledgeable people when they control their senses the control of the senses will enhance the beauty of the knowledgeable people hmm. and another thing similarly it is said that humility will enhance the beauty of the learned people shrutasya vinayah and vittasya patre vyah when a person gives charity to the deserving people that will enhance the beauty of the wealthy people the beauty of the wealthy people is that when they give charity to the deserving people and then it is said that akrodha tapasa when a person controls one's anger that enhances the beauty of the uh, ascetic that enhances the beauty of the uh, people performing tapasya because when it comes a person uh, the ascetics they easily become angry huh. and then it is said that uh, forgiveness enhances the beauty of the powerful people kshama prabhavitur dharmasya nirvyajata and freedom from hypocrisy that enhances the beauty of the dharmic people huh. or nishkapatata or uh, freedom from hypocrisy enhances the beauty of the dharmic people and sarvesham api sarva karanam idam shilam param bhushanam the so good character is the fundamental quality that becomes the root cause of all of the above so essentially anyway the point is that many times uh, those who are very austere they also tend to become easily they tend to easily exhibit one's anger but so therefore the demigods they came to pacify naranara and rishi but indra was completely fearful of that naranara and rishi may become angry towards him but when when indra came to him naranara and rishi with complete gentleness he asked uh, how can i serve you we are so grateful that you have come to my hut as a guest and uh, we are honored our our 
had to honored because of you coming as a guest and please tell us how can i serve you when indra heard this particular response of nara nara and rishi he was completely taken aback because he had experienced whenever he tried to previously tried to disturb the tapasya of the uh, sages the sages had exhibited great anger vishwamitra burnt um burnt with the uh, burnt like uh, i think the apsara with his anger uh, so here uh, indra was expecting a similar response but when he saw the response of narana narendrishi he was completely uh, like uh, taken aback so at that time he glorifies narana narendrishi shutra trikala guna maruta jaiva shaishna asman apara jaladi अतिथीर्य केचि क्रोध से यांति विपल से वशम पदे गोर मज्जन्ति दुश्चर तपस्य वृतोत्सृजन्ति हि सेज दैट सम पीपल परफॉर्म सिवियर पेनेंसेस टू क्रॉस बियॉन्ड टू क्रॉस बियॉन्ड द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ वी डेमीगॉड्स बिकॉज़ द डेमीगॉड्स अम they control the different aspects of the universal creation in the universe there is hunger thirst heat cold uh, all these things are brought about by the demigods in the passage of time and the demigods sometimes they try to distract the living entities with the uh, uh, through the cupid with the sensuous wind and they create urges of the different uh, senses the urges of the tongue and the sex organs but some people they try to they perform severe penances to cross beyond our influence which is like an immeasurable ocean with hunger thirst heat cold cold rain brought about by the passage of time sensuous wind and the urges of the tongue and the sex organs but although they cross beyond this ocean of this uh, immeasurable ocean of hunger thirst etc after crossing the ocean after crossing such an immeasurable ocean they fall under the control of useless anger and they drown in the water of a cow's hoof print they fall under the control of a Uh, puddle of anger and drown in the water of a uh, cow's hoof print so like just imagine uh, suppose somebody manages to swim across the pacific ocean is practically impossible uh, but after uh, like uh, managing to swim across the pacific ocean suppose if there is a news that such a person uh, drowned in a uh, a yeah, baby swimming pool swimming pool meant for the babies and he drowned in the swimming pool and died will people believe that actually uh, so similarly here like they, they say that some sages they cross beyond the ocean of immeasurable ocean of hunger thirst heat cold etc but then la- the later uh, they fall under the control of useless anger and drown in the water of a cow's hoof print and when they drown in that uh, puddle of anger they destroy the benefit of their difficult austerities uh, so they performed the great austerities to cross the immeasurable ocean but they destroy the benefit of their, uh, their austerities by drowning the anger and they can neither enjoy nor attain liberation but then they are saying that you naranara and rishi but you not only crossed over the immeasurable ocean of the attacks of cupid when we sent this apsara you not only did not get attracted with this apsara but you also did not become angry towards me who tried to make you fall down in this way uh, indra is glorifying narana rayanishi that's why in the bhagavad gita krishna says that trividam narakasya edam dwaram nashana atmanah kama krodha sata lobha tasmat etat trayam jayet so lust greed and anger the three gates to hell 
therefore one should give up these bartrhari tells the neeti shataka kanta kataksha vishika na lunanti yasya chittam na nirdahati kopa krishanu tapa tarshanti bhuri vishayascha na loba pasha lokatrayam jayati krishna midam sadirah that person whose mind is not disturbed by the sidelong glances of his beloved and who does not burn in the fire of anger and does not get attracted towards the objects of pleasure essentially that person who is not attracted by the kama krodha and lobha such a person loka trayam jayati krishna midam sadira he wins over the three worlds he wins over the three worlds and that is what rupa goswami says the beginning of upadeshamrita vacho vegam manasa krodha vegam jihva vegam udara upastha vegam etan vegan yo vishaheta dira sarvam api mam prativim satashya one who can control the six urges Uh, just of the body mind and the words uh, urges of the uh, urges of the mind is the urges of the mind is basically the uh, manasa krodha vegam the different desires in the mind and the urge to become angry urges of the tongue is basically to speak and to to eat different palatable dishes and uh, मनस क्रोध वेगम जिह्वा उदर उपस्थ वेगम अर्जेसिटलिटी has the quality of forgiveness or uh, the quality of uh, <coughs> tolerance then why do you need a kavacha you would you need a armor so the best protector is the one's actually <coughs> uh, one's quality of forgiveness or tolerance and kim aribihi krodha krodho asti if a person is having anger then why do you need enemies usually enemies try to destroy a person but if a person is having the if a person is uh, prone to become angry then he does not need external enemies his own internal enemy in the form of the anger itself will destroy that person so why do you need external enemies and like that there are like many list of things mentioned uh, औषधम if the good friends are there then why do you need uh, medicines because the good friends are the medicine of a person am kim sarpair yadi durjana if bad association is there why do you need snakes uh, because the bad association is like a poison the, the bad association will inject the poison within us you don't need external snake uh, which will inject poison and then uh, kimu danair vidyana avadhyayati uh, that means um, with uh, if a person has knowledge then why do you need other types of wealth because knowledge is the greatest wealth uh, and then um, vrida chet kim bhushanai if a person has the quality of shyness uh, then uh, then what is the need of any external ornaments in the form of the gold silver necklace etc because shyness is the best ornament su kavita yadyasti rajyena kim if a person has the quality of composing good poetry 
then why does a person need to be a king generally a king controls everyone but if a person has a quality of composing good poetry then by that good speech good poetry he can actually attract every people so there is no need to be a king so this are good uh, this thing in the <coughs> neeti shataka in especially i mentioned that uh, this verse says that if the if the anger is there why do you need external enemies because anger itself will destroy a person so in the with the bhagavatam first kind to parishit maharaj is called as abhimanyu suta why parishit maharaj is called as abhimanyu suta the son of abhimanyu so abhimanyu the word abhimanyu means what abitah parito manyur yasya that means one who became angry in all directions uh, he is called as abhimanyu manyu means anger one who exhibited anger towards all direction he is called as abhimanyu because abhimanyu fought so valiantly uh, during the chakravyuha like he exhibited anger in the unlimitedly towards all directions therefore he is called abhimanyu but then so generally but uh, one may say when parishit maharaj is called as abhimanyu suta is it a glorification of parishit maharaj or is it a uh, derogatory phrase because ang- anger is something in the mode of ignorance or mode of passion when you call parishit maharaj the son of a person who exhibited unlimited anger how can this word be a glorification of parishit maharaj so vallabhacharya in his commentary he says that abhimanyu exhibited his anger because as a kshatriya he exhibited his dharma uh, to by exhibiting his anger of chivalry in the battle field but as a vaishnava uh, as a vaishnava uh, internally he was free from anger krodha abhavascha vaishnava but internally he is free from anger being a vaishnava but as a kshatriya he exhibited anger externally so in this way we see that here uh, lord ananta he is actually angry to, when he sees that uh, the living entities are not utilizing their opportunity to uh, perform devotional service and go back to god but although he is seeing that the most living entities are not utilizing the facility of the material world but because it is not the time of annihilation it is a time of maintenance he restrains his anger out of compassion towards the people uh, for the welfare of the people so only at a certain time he exhibits his anger and destroys the material world hare krishna stop here thank you so much for this uh, very beautiful class regarding so many important uh, anarthas that we have to overcome in our uh, path thank you prabhu thank you so much especially the part of anger where to express where not to express that was really very helpful prabhu thank you thank you there's a question in the chat box how to control anger hemi gupta makaji also if we do get angry how do we atone for it there are definitely the practical difficulty of the dream it is definitely easy to speak about anger to bring different quotes on anger and practical provoking situations and at times uh, we fall victim to anger what i can say about controlling anger because anger arises from rajoguna and tamoguna krodha bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibramaha so controlling anger we have to raise the uh, <coughs> we have to lead a life of satvaguna means like we have to choose different aspects of our life in sattva guna 
the more the rajoguna is there then that leads to anger so when the when you increase the sattva guna then you can use the anger as an instrument so anger can be as i mentioned anger also has its utility but uh, we have to be careful that it is used as an instrument and not be come under the control of the anger and uh, the solution is that we have to increase the sattva guna sattva guna increasing the sattva guna means krishna that is why we read see in the bhagavad gita especially 17th 18th chapter krishna speaks about so many things knowledge in three modes worker in three modes happiness in three modes intelligence in three modes the purpose of krishna describing in detail about the three modes of nature is to actually uh, make a person come to sattva guna so there are so many verses in the gita which talk about the lifestyle lifestyle means about the three gunas so often times uh, we uh, often times we we spend a lot of time in talking about the transcendental subject matters transcendental subject matters means uh, say holy name or shrimad bhagavatam uh, raganuga bhakti etc but then uh, many times we don't spend much time speaking about the lifestyle lifestyle means uh, choosing things in sattva guna so suppose if a person is speaking to person if you are discussing all the time about uh, so if a person is supposed has to catch a flight in a airport to go to some foreign country and he is doing lot of research about the future destination in the foreign country every day he spends a two hours browsing through the foreign country and doing a lot of research and he made a detailed research of that but then he didn't make a proper plan about how to reach the airport on that particular day to catch the air. flight uh, he didn't make a proper investigation about how much what is the distance between his place and the airport and is there any strike on that particular day in that particular city how much time before he should leave the this thing or how much uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, like uh, will there that the taxi driver will take us to the airport is the taxi driver proper or are the taxi is the taxi proper like he doesn't make he has completely neglected the aspect of reaching the airport but he has made a lot of research about the future destination after catching the flight whichever country is going so often times uh, people spend a lot of time about the transcendental subject matters but about the lifestyle uh, in sattva guna that is about lifestyle in sattva guna is about reaching the airport and this aspect is many times often neglected and when that uh, uh, when this lifestyle in sattva guna is reject neglected and uh, that actually leads to that will uh, lead to certain breakdown while reaching the airport although you may have your ticket booked for catching the flight but on the way you may have the car may break down or the driver may be drunk uh, or uh, there may be strike in the this one therefore your journey you may be experiencing great problems on the journey to the airport uh, so so therefore it is important that one of the way to control anger is to choose every aspect of our life in sattva guna uh, and then when sattva guna content is raised then we can use the anger as an instrument so uh, this is one thing which i can say about anger how to actually atone for the anger yeah we yes yeah, some even after the choosing things in sattva guna we do become angry but at least when we we realize that we fell victim to anger uh we beg forgiveness from towards the object of the our anger at least we exhibit we show forgiveness towards from the person with whom we became angry and then we try to do something positive towards the person not simply beg forgiveness but also 
say appreciate glorify that person render service to that person uh, that is so we can atone for that there is one more question prabhuji in the chat jyoti takne mata ji yes sir could you please tell us practical solutions for high level temper and sudden change in temperament how one should behave with such people how one should behave with such people yeah we have to understand that there are, when we deal with people every person has certain boiling point actually so everybody has their good side and bad side so we have to be aware of their boiling point so and and then deal with them in such a way that we don't bring out the bad side of the person so sometimes uh, because of our behavior we can bring out the bad side of the person the uh, chitraketu maharaj he brought out the bad side of the queens by his neglect the other queens they became so envious and uh, they planned and killed the small uh, that harsha shoka was a small boy small child how uh, all these queens were very cultured people how did they become so envious because chitraketu maras neglect towards them and that that neglect was also unconscious neglect so therefore it is important that uh, we understand what is the boiling point of the different people or which things which will actually provocate the people and we have to carefully avoid them there is one more question pooja arora mata ji uh, if one is not one does not if one is not getting initiation in this age because of different reasons like non devotee family circumstances he or she so it may possible for him to liberated while applying for relative principles only yeah even if a person does not get formal initiation because of whatever reasons uh nonsense uh, if a person has accepted a particular guru even within the mind because the heart of the initiation is accepting that person within the mind for the formal process also is important but sometimes uh, because of whatever practical reasons if there is not formal initiation is not happening but we can accept the particular person as the guru if one wants mind and follow the instructions of the guru and uh, the most important instruction of the guru is chanting the holy names chaitanya charitamrita describes that how uh, holy name can liberate one even the diksha is not required Yeah, this is uh, my suggestion is that even if the, somebody is not able to get initiated because of various practical reasons, then one can accept the guru in one's mind and follow the instructions and take shelter of the holy name, which is the most important instruction of the guru. Correct. Thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, I would request Anuradha Mataji to ask her question. thank you madhavi thank you prabhu for the beautiful class the point that you said that about the movies and so many other things that so many unreal thing but we are spending real money and real time that was so so very awakening prabhu thank you for that point um prabhu my basic question is ananta dev he is all he is the adi guru tatva isn't it or there is some layer of understanding prabhu is the is amsha of balram ji so he is guru, guru tatva, tatva is that ha uh, he is the guru he has the element yeah. of guru tatva yeah so because i was thinking that guru is always very merciful so does he get angry and mm-hmm. annihilate the world so i was just thinking on that point prabhu yes yes he is also as per the guru tatva thank you prabhu hari krishna dhanyawad i understand prahlad ananda prabhu i understand shri prabhupad said 
one who faithfully reads his books and follows his instruction is his initiated disciple very good yeah correct thank you very much for this comment no there are no more questions prabhu ji there is only one comment thank you prabhu ji by anupam okay. from your mother for the past times and anger management thank you mother thank you thank you we'll stop here for... huh. yes prantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila bhagavatam ki jai jai patrupya sakta shanti sakti chapati chana bhavati yo vasudeva namaha namo namaha krishna ene raksha thank you prabhu ji hare krishna thank you prabhu ji so much thank you prabhu ji hare krishna hare radhe hare krishna